Most developers spend months and years learning Rust, but they still write Rust code like a newbie. In this video, I'll compress what takes most people months and years to figure out into only 10 minutes. Here are 21 plus Rust pro tips that separate junior Rust newbies from high-performing mid-level and senior Rust developers, based on my experience personally mentoring over 100 Rust engineers. Let's start with the beginning of your Rust learning journey. At first, your goal isn't to write perfect code, it's to ship fast and learn faster. Here are five tips to help you. When debugging Rust code, instead of using printline like other languages, switch to the debug macro. You instantly see the variable name, the file and line number, and get a clean indented layout with debug formatting. And instead of leaving to do or fix me comments that break compilation, drop in a to do macro. Your code now compiles. If the function is called at runtime, a clear panic message will appear. Next, you need to stop killing your productivity by constantly switching between your editor and your terminal to run commands whenever your code changes. That's exactly what Cargo Bacon was created for. Cargo Bacon runs your cargo commands automatically every time you hit save, giving you a 10x faster feedback loop and keeping you in flow. Hit T on your keyboard and Bacon even runs your tests. But here's the crazy part. We can make this even faster. With Cargo Next Test, you can run your tests in parallel using smart caching and get a clean, color-coded UI. The best part is it's built directly into Bacon. Just hit N and your test will be executed with Next Test. These handy tools make you a faster Rust developer, but using compiler-driven development will make you a better one. In this example, calling the greet function moves ownership of name into greet. So calling greet twice breaks Rust's ownership rules. The Rust compiler doesn't just tell you what's wrong, it tells you why it's wrong and often how to fix it. It's like having a senior engineer looking over your shoulder who never gets tired and never lets bugs slip through. Once you start treating the compiler like a mentor instead of an obstacle, you'll stop fighting Rust and realize the compiler is actually refactoring your mind to think like a Rust developer. With these five tips, you've learned how to ship fast and learn faster. Now it's time to learn how to write Rust code that scales. By the way, this video is sponsored by the Rust Live Accelerator program. You'll be able to join the waitlist very soon. More on that later. Once you get comfortable shipping Rust code, your next goal is to write code that scales. These seven tips will help you do that. Let's start by scaling your code through type reuse. In Rust, traits let you define shared behavior and implement it for different types. Once you have a trait, there are two main ways to use it, with generics or trait objects. When you use generics, the compiler creates a specialized version of your function for every type it's used with. This gives you optimal runtime performance, but it also increases compile times and binary size. Tray objects, on the other hand, let Rust decide the concrete type at runtime through a small lookup table, a process called dynamic dispatch. Tray objects are easier to use and make your code more flexible, but they come with a tiny runtime cost. So here's a rule of thumb. Start with tray objects for simplicity and fast iteration. Switch to generics when you need compile time guarantees or optimal runtime performance. Generics and tray objects help you reuse logic across types. But what about reusing patterns across your entire code base? That's where macros come in. When your code starts to repeat itself, don't copy paste the pattern, automate it. Imagine we're defining multiple models like user and product. Each one needs the same basic methods, find, save, delete, Instead of writing this repetitive code by hand, you can move that repetitive code into a macro and then create as many models as you'd like without repeating code. The other great thing is that changes are done in one place. So use macros to scale patterns, not just code. Now, as your Rust project grows, code organization becomes just as important as the code itself. If you're working on a binary, it's best practice to make your main.rs as thin as possible and keep your application logic in lib.rs. This separates your reusable logic from your binary entry point, making it easier to test, benchmark, and even reuse in other crates. But as your app grows, lib.rs will become bloated. At this point, you can split logic into separate modules. Each module should have a single responsibility. In this case, commands handles user actions and storage handles file input output. And if you keep repeating the same imports across files, it's time to create a prelude file. A prelude re-exports commonly used types, traits, and helpers, reducing repetitive imports. Just make sure it's curated. Don't dump your entire crate in there. Controlling visibility is also critical in a growing project. Be intentional about what you expose and what you keep private. This is important because exposing too much of your code makes it harder to change or refactor later without breaking things that depend on it. 
You can also use PubCrate to make functions or modules visible only within the same crate, while keeping them hidden from the outside world. Now, when your project grows beyond a single package, for example, when you split your app into a CLI and core library, move to a cargo workspace. A workspace lets you manage multiple related packages in one place, sharing dependencies using a single cargo log file and running builds or tests across all packages with one command. So that's how you build Rust code that truly scales. But once you hit the senior level, your job isn't just to write great Rust, it's to lead teams and build systems that can't fail. Here are 11 tips every senior Rust engineer should know. First, we need to learn about type-driven design. In other words, how to structure your code so the compiler enforces correctness for you. In the following example, there are two common mistakes. First, the email field is just an unvalidated string. It can be anything. To fix this, we need to incorporate type-driven design by making types valid upon construction. In this case, we'll create a new email type that wraps the string and performs validation when the type is constructed. This can be done in other languages as well, but Rust makes this pattern particularly powerful because fields are private by default and there are no implicit constructors. So the only way to create an email type is to go through the parse constructor and check to see if we got a valid result. Okay, so we fixed one problem. The email is now always valid, but there's still one issue left, the user's state. We are tracking state with a Boolean. Nothing stops another developer from calling the send email function with an unverified user, which is why we have to check for this case inside the function body. Instead, let's model the verified and unverified states with the type state pattern. We'll represent each state as its own struct. Unverified users will have a verify method that consumes self and returns a verified user. By consuming self, we guarantee the original unverified instance can no longer be used. And since verified user has its own send email method, only verified users can call it. Enforced by the compiler, not runtime checks. By modeling our user states as types, the compiler enforces the flow for us. Unverified users can't send emails and verified users can't go back to being unverified. That's how you design programs so that invalid states are impossible to represent in the first place. Speaking of leveraging the compiler, as your Rust project and team grow, enforcing consistent style and best practices is crucial. That's where Clippy comes in, Rust's built-in linting tool that scans your code for common mistakes. In your Rust code base, you can configure Clippy to trigger compile time errors for things like inefficient loops and data structures, unnecessary clones, and unchecked unwraps. You can also take advantage of the must use attribute to trigger compile time errors if developers ignore a return value. These tools harden your code base against bad practices, unoptimized code, and even bugs. The best part is some of these errors can automatically be fixed by running the Clippy fix command in your terminal. And the rest of the errors are usually straightforward to resolve. So Clippy helps you catch mistakes and enforce good habits. But consistency isn't just about avoiding errors. It's about making every file in your code base feel and look unified. Instead of relying on code reviews to fix style or lint issues, let Rust format handle it automatically. Simply add a Rust format.toml file to the root of your Rust project directory. Specify your styling rules and let cargo format automatically format code based on your team standards. This keeps git commit diffs clean, removes noise from reviews, and ensures your code base stays maintainable as your team scales. You can also add a Rust toolchain toml file to lock the exact Rust version and even the components like Clippy and Rust format. Now, every build on every machine uses the same compiler, the same rules, and the same tools. It's one of the simplest ways to make your builds reproducible and your onboarding frictionless. Once your toolchain is locked down, the next step is strengthening your CI CD pipeline. Here are a few cargo plugins that will instantly upgrade your security, testing, and build performance. First, we have Cargo Audit. It checks your dependencies for known vulnerabilities using the RustSec database. Run it in your CI CD pipeline to keep your supply chain secure. Second, Cargo Deny. It enforces dependency rules such as blocking unwanted crates, checking licenses, and detecting duplicates. Cargo Deny prevents developers from adding dependencies you don't allow. Think of it as dependency hygiene for your team. Next, we have Cargo Tarpaulin. It generates test coverage reports so you can instantly see what your tests miss. And you can even fail the build if coverage drops below your standard. And another tool worth adding to your pipeline is Cargo Chef. It caches dependencies to make CI CD builds dramatically faster. Together, these plugins harden your system, securing, testing, and optimizing every step of your workflow. 
If you enjoy these Rust Pro tips and are excited to apply them in your own projects, you're going to love the Rust Lab Accelerator. We're opening 30 spots for the next cohort very, very soon. And this time around, I actually got a few surprises for you. So click the link below to join the waitlist. You'll be the first to know when applications open and receive the surprises I'm only giving to those joining the waitlist starting today. So tap the link, join the waitlist, and I'll see you inside.